Shalom. This is Abaddon from the tribe of Benjamin. I want to say Kal, Alayim, La, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles who teach the sincere truth and push the sincere truth around the four winds of the earth. What's goody, Israel? Kwam Yasharala, it's your boy Abidan. The 12 tribes of Israel, you know, we the chosen people. <laughs> right, like Ice Cube said, we the chosen people. Straight up though, 12 tribes of Israel. So today, lesson is gonna be about the tribe of Benjamin, Ben Yum Yum, right? So the northern kingdom will go under Ephraim, right? The southern kingdom will go under Judah. The southern kingdom will be considered the dark skin or the Negroes. You don't necessarily got to be dark skin because there's a lot of light skin Negroes. But you know, the southern kingdom would be not Spanish nor Indian but more Negro, right? The Negroes, West Indians, and Haitians are considered the Southern Kingdom. So today we're gonna do some history on the Southern Kingdom, the transatlantic slave trade, a little bit into that, the colonizers, right? And uh, some of the tribal features of the Maroon tribe, uh, some of the features and characteristics that are real similar to the old Hebrew customs, all right? So let's get right into it. Judah, so-called African-American Negroes, Benjamin, so-called West Indians, Jamaicans, Trinidadians, right? The Bahamas, all those West Indian islands, right? Levi, so-called Haitians, all right? Southern Kingdom. Make this fast. So there's the Apocrypha right there. The 14 books of the Apocrypha above were removed from the original KJV Bible in 1885. As you can see, this devil has always been trying to manipulate the script and take away the truth. Leaving 66 books, it tells in 2nd Ezra 13, chapters 40 through 45, how the northern tribes sailed to Arsareth a.k.a. the Americas, North, South, and Central Americas. But the Southern tribes remained in the East for a period of time. All right. Damn devils. Had to take out the Apocrypha because it tells too much truth. Always trying to subtract the truth. All right. Images of the Hebrew Israelites. To captivity. We got the Hebrew Israelites in Babylon around 678 BC in captivity. Then we got them in the Assyrian captivity around 680 BC. These images and engravings above prove that the Hebrew Israelites were a people of Negro or dark skinned descent. They are wearing their hair in locks, twists, or braids, and natural kinky and woolly form. Their braids are also kinky and woolly. There are also many more images of the Hebrews of the Bible. Right? You can see the images, the 
kinky woolly hair, the locks, the braids, right? The buckshots. <laughs> the most high, we say Mashiach, have woolly hair and the head. Daniel chapter 7 and 9 and Revelation chapter 1 and 14 describe Yahweh, the most high. And we don't say Christ, we say Mashiach. In 70 AD, the children of Israel fled into the Atlas Mountains of Africa and other western regions of smaller groups scattered in Africa under Roman persecution of General Vespasian and his son Titus. The Jews, Hebrews, Southern Kingdom, right? Judah, that's where Jews come from. Judah, Jews. That remained in Jerusalem were slaughtered and enslaved. Yahawashai prophesied of this in Matthew's chapter 24 through 15 and 16. Luke chapter 21, 20 through 21. All right. Zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit of the map there. All right. The Negro slaves brought into America are descendants of the Jews, Judah, that came into West Africa from Israel between the slave trade of 1500s and 1870. The Jews were dispersed to Americas and abroad. The Israelites hid in a region where they could blend in with the dark-skinned Hamites. Israelites were dark-skinned Shemites. Israelites, right? Were Israelites, not Hamites. That goes out to the false doctrine from the Mormon book, the curse of Ham. Nah, we're not Hamites. We're Israelites from the line of Shem, the Shemites, Hebrew Israelites. All right, let me zoom in so you can see. All right, Africa to the Americas, right? That's why the 12 tribe makes sense. See, all South Africa, South America, all through the islands, Barbados, Cuba, Haiti, Jamaica, right? And Trinidad is all up in there, right above uh, Venezuela is Trinidad and Tobago. The Caribbean Sea, Florida. So as you can see, we scattered, just like it says. We scattered all through the Americas. All right. All right, moving on. Ben Yum Yum, Benjamin. The wolf is the symbol that represents the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin or Ben Yum Yum in Hebrew is translated as son of the right. Wolf known for their boldness and fierceness of attack, live and hunt in family groups called packs. The wolf has developed the capacity to survive in the most inhospi inhospitable of climates. All right. And that's saying Yaspe, the stone of Jasper, that's the stone for Benjamin, right? And that's the wolf. That's why I put it as my avatar, because, you know, I'm proud to have woken up to know that I'm a Benjamite. 
בן ים ים. Me a real West Indian boy, a real Hebrew that boy. Yeah. My grandfathers are from the islands, Trinidad and Tobago. A real Hebrew that boy. All right, so Genesis 49 and 27. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. Deuteronomy 33 and 12. And of Benjamin he said, The beloved of the, the Lord Yahweh shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. All right. The biblical prophecy concerning Benjamin as a wolf is the best way to distinguish this tribe amongst the nations and other people of the earth. The group of people that fit this prophecy more than any other people in the world are the offspring of the Maroons and their offspring. The Maroons of Jamaica, West Indies and Trinidad, right? The Bahamas, all through the West Indies. Enslaved West Africans who had escaped into the wilderness to form their own separate communities, especially in the Jamaica and West Indies were called Maroons. Maroon comes from the Spanish word Cimarron, meaning wild or untamed. It also means fugitive or runaway slave or savage. Cimarron, so Maron. Right? Marons, Maroons, Marons. The Marons were also refer referred to as Coromantes, these tribe of people resided on the coast of West Africa. In reality, they are the Benjamite of the tribe of Benjamin. They possess re-owned characteristics of pride and discipline, courageousness and stubbornness. Right? Stubbornness in the fact that they would not conform to slavery. The Negroes of Jamaica, the West Indies, and Trinidad are the direct descendants of the runaway slaves who establish free communities in the mountains interior of Jamaica during slavery in the New World as early as 1512. S slaves had escaped from Spanish and Portuguese captures and either joined indigenous people or eked out Living on their own, the Maroons organized dozens of slave rebellions. All right? Dozens of slave rebellions. Genesis 49 and 27, right? We just read that one. And you can see the wolf, the Maroons. Raven, Hebrew meaning to pluck off or pull to pieces. To supply with food, catch without doubt, feed. All right. The Maroons would raven their enemy plantation masters and also the militia men of the English forces. A pack of wolf, wolves attack and raven their prey. All right. So... The Maroons were raven their plantation enemies on the left hand side, and a pack of wolves attack and raven their prey on the right hand side. The Benjamites was not putting up with that boy. Them a fight them colonizers. The, Mar the Maroons rebelled against colonialism, against enslavement, against discrimination, and against racism. They preferred death 
over slavery and they used every inch of the fighting spirit that Yahweh gave to them to release themselves out of bondage. All right. Their efforts included plantation raids, the killing of white militiamen, and the freeing of slaves. They would raid plantations, taking food, women, ammunition, guns, and supplies, spoils with them, and divide the spoils amongst one another. Spoils meaning booty, prey, reward. When some of these slaves escaped, they formed small bands that mercilessly attacked the Spanish mule train caravans with their cargoes of riches, gold, silver, and supplies for the colonies. As more and more runaway slaves joined these bands, their ranks swelled to formidable sizes. Maroons were Resourceful people. All right. Wolves always hunt their prey in packs. And when they bring down their prey, they share in the meal, or in other words, divide the spoil. Okay. The Maroons were known for their dangerous character. Their superior strength was highly valued, especially by slave traders. They were strong and active with ferocious tendencies. Just like nowadays when you got the Olympics, you always see Jamaica there. You always see Trinidad there. You know, Usain Bolt holds the world record for the fastest man on the earth. That's them Benyamyums, them Benjamites, right? Ferocious tendencies. The Maroons wait in ambush for their enemies. On the left, right? The Maroon lookout man hiding. Another advantage that the Maroons utilized were lookout men. Since the English predominantly came looking for the Maroons. Maroons could wait in hiding, waiting for the English to make a move. Looking out, lookout men would spot approaching forces. Then they would lie and wait in the bush, in the brush that em emitted the same odor, camouflaging their scent. Bushing up, bushing up, dread, bushing up, was the term they used to describe this. So good were the Maroons at camouflage that legends grew about them. It was said that the Maroons had the ability to appear and disappear at will, to stand so still in the evergreen that a party of soldiers could walk right past them and not see them. When they raided plantations, it was said that the guard dogs could not even detect their approach. All right now you see me now you don't all right now you see me now you don't wolf pack ambush of the prey on the left wolf hiding in the brush on the right characteristics yahweh never fails with his prophecies all right look at the characteristics matching up The maroon A-bang, that's the horn. It was similar to the horn that uh, Joshua used to blow down the walls around Jericho, okay? Another characteristics, right? Wolves use one form of communication known as howling. Wolves howl for several reasons. So wolves howl back and forth to communicate, right? Same thing. Use, they use this horn for the Hebrews. All right, there it goes. Uh, Joshua chapter six, verse four and five. All right. A 
another characteristic I thought was interesting. And of Benjamin, he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in the safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. All right. The cockpit country in Jamaica are the shoulders of the Lord, where the Benjamites dwell in safety. All right. So there's some similarities there, too. The cockpit corners of the country, right? These cockpits post a large problem for the English in their tracking down of the Maroons. Walking along single file through the cockpits, the English would have little to no escape route once the English soldiers were deep inside the cockpits or where the Maroons felt that their enemies were most vulnerable. Maroon sharpshooters would shoot and kill their enemy with deadly accuracy, leaving their enemy little to no chance of escape. All right, the Blue Mountains in Jamaica. Okay. So that's the comparison with the Maroons, the Wolf, and a little brief history, and you can see the characteristics and similarities and some of the traits. All right. And now let's go to a couple definitions and we'll close it up. Colonizer. Colonizer. A country that sends settlers to place and establish political control over it. Portugal was a major colonizer in both Brazil and parts of Africa, right? Both Brazil and parts of Africa are colonizers, right? Just showed you that. Colonizers. Getting handed, getting dealt with. All right. Brazil. Slave trade, all right? Colonizers, Portugal, Brazil, and all through. The West Indies, up to North America, up to Central America, North America, and South America. All right. Colonizer. All right. A country that sends settlers to a place and establish political control over it. How do they do that? With brute violence and force. All right, the Atlantic slave trade, transatlantic slave trade, or Euro-American slave trade involved the transportation by slave traders of enslaved African people, mainly to the Americas. The, all right, mainly to the Americas. Okay, that's the slave trade. What does slave trader mean? It's a noun. Slave trader, a person engaged in slave trade, slave dealer, slaver, victimizer. All right, who's the victimizer? Esau is the victimizer. Esau is the victimizer. Esau is the slave trader, the colonizer. All right. Well, that was a brief lesson on the Maroons, Benjamin, Bunyum Yum, the history of transatlantic slave trade, and going through the West Indies, and the history of the Hebrew Israelites standing up against the colonizers and showing the characteristics of the Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite history. Twelve tribes of Israel, 
Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom, Ephraim, Judah coming together again, waking up in our land of captivity, like in Baruch 2 and 30. All right? And with that, I'm going to say Shalom. On to the next one, family.